This is a short video about um, continuity of a function between two metric spaces. So if you're given two metric spaces, say x, and let's say its distance uh, as a distance function d, and let's say you've got another space y whose distance function is rho, um, we could talk about a function from x to y. And so how we'll write it, we might write it like this. So f colon this space to this space, and we would say is continuous at some point that we pick out ahead of time, say x, or I'm sorry, say a that's in the domain, if, and this is the definition here. So uh, I'll write it this way, for every epsilon bigger than zero, um, so for any arbitrary positive number epsilon, uh, there exists some positive number delta, such that if the distance back here in x between a and x is less than delta, for um, x and x, then that should guarantee that the distance between the outputs of a and x uh, over here in y should be less than this number epsilon. And, and so that distance, we measure distances over in y by rho. So then rho of f of a, f of x has to be less than epsilon. So to give you kind of a picture, and it might be good, we usually think about these things as like blobs. Here's the space X, and I'm saying, okay, here's two points in the space A and X, and I measure the distance between these two things. D measures that distance. Well, on the other hand, I've got another space called Y, and I've got like F of X and F of A, and now the distance between these two points, whatever you want to call that, that's measured by this function rho again, that metric there. So uh, what are we saying? What's this definition of this function being continuous? So if I've got a function from x to y, we're saying that if I start with an a here, I consider the point f of a over here. And what it's really trying to say is, we can kind of say this with open balls too, if you were given any number epsilon and you make an open ball around f of a of radius epsilon, say, if this function f is continuous, then that means that you should be able to go back to the domain, so back to x here, and you should be able to find a ball small enough, so in other words, you should be able to find a radius, delta, that's small enough that'll guarantee that every single point in this blue ball back here gets sent to, or gets put inside of, this green ball over here on the right, in the, in the codomain, over here in the range. So we should be able to find a delta there exists a delta small enough such that that whole ball back here in the domain gets sent inside of this ball over here. So to give you a concrete example of uh, something that's continuous, we'll look at an old friend um, that we dealt with, especially if you've taught college algebra or you know, everybody's had college algebra. So if we look at F going from say R to R, and let's say the usual metric on this, so like absolute value, so like remember D, is uh, dxy is equal to absolute value of x minus y, just how far apart two numbers are in a number line. And so what's my function? Let's stay defined by f of x is just equal to x squared. So like, I know we're usually used to thinking about the graph of this thing. I'm not thinking about the graph right now. I'm just thinking about, okay, one blob over here is one copy of the real line. That's my domain. And I've got a function that is just going to tell me how points over here in this copy, I'm sorry, that function should say R. I'm sorry, it should say F. So we're gonna talk about how do points over here in this copy of the real line correspond to points over here on this copy of the real line. And so, you know, something like zero, definitely gets sent to zero, so I'll try to label them the same color. Um, also something like uh, um, one, say, definitely gets sent to one over here. But then uh, what else? Uh, minus one also gets sent to this point one when I square it. So I'll do one more. Um, I'll do, say, two. So two, why don't I I'll make these little dots here. And so uh, finally, two is the last one I'll do. Two should get sent over here to four, according to this formula. So we'll call that four. Now, what I want to do is I want to just give you an example about what is this stuff with epsilons and deltas trying to say. So we're saying that for any epsilon that you pick and you put a window around, and maybe I should say this too. I should start ahead of time too. <laughs> so this function here, we know from like calculus say that this function's continuous. And so I want to try to explain that to you in this way too. So let's try to show that this function's continuous at the point two. 
So our A here is two. And so what we care about then, we're gonna think about two, and we're gonna think about two's output four. Now, what this definition says again is for any window of radius epsilon you put around the output four. So in my case, let's just randomly pick one. So let's say that I put a window around four of say uh, radius one half. So I'm saying, I'm gonna look at the interval from 3.5 to 4.5. And so epsilon is equal to one half. What I should be able to do is I should be able to go back here in the domain and find a window around the input two so that everything in that interval around two lands inside of this purple interval over here on the right. And then just to kind of um, randomly pick one, I'll get my calculator out too because I'm going to need some help. <laughs> um, maybe I'll put a window around two of say, I'll do it in another color too, I'll do it in blue. What if I did 1.9 and say 2.1? So in this case, I'm saying let's take delta equal to 0 0.1. So this blue interval here is, you know, the, the, the ball centered at two of radius 0 0.1, if you want to think of it that way. And then now what goes on here? What I claim is that if I plug in any number in this blue interval into this function, in other words, if I square it, it should be a number that lands over here in this purple interval. In other words, I should guarantee that I can find some window around the input that lands in this window around the output that you know we started with arbitrarily. I kind of randomly picked that a half is the way to think about that. And of course, if you square 1.9, um, you get something, calculator, 3.61. So 3.61, yeah, that lands to the right of this point. So I'm in here. And then similarly, if I square uh, 2.1, you get 4.41, and we're happy about that because 4.41 doesn't go past that endpoint of 4.5. So what I'm trying to justify to you is that yes, this entire blue interval lands inside of this purple interval over here. And again, that's what we were trying to say here.